Chapter 1. Keep calm and carry on. We were halfway through the news when the air raid started. It was a Friday in January. We were at the Picture Palace for the 6pm showing of the Mark of Zorro. All month the Luftwaffe had been attacking us, their bombs falling on London like pennies from a jar. The Luftwaffe is the name of the German Air Force. So the fact that they couldn't hold off for just a few measly hours made me hate the Germans that little bit more. The cinema trip had been my sister Suki's idea, as most things were. We were all in need of cheering up that evening. After the tea we'd just eaten at home, it was a wonder we were still alive. After the tea we'd just eaten at home, it was a wonder we were still alive. I wonder if that's a reference to rationing, uh, and perhaps they hadn't had very much to eat. We know there were shortages of food during the Second World War, and families had ration books which they took to the shop, and they were given a set amount of key food items so that they wouldn't run out. It's like brains, Cliff, my eight-year-old brother said, lifting the pan lid to show us. It was probably only minced meat and potatoes, but you never knew with mum's dinners, especially the ones you had to reheat when she was working late. And Cliff relished gory details, being the sort who'd pick scabs off his knee just to see what was underneath. Well, you never get scabby knees, Olive, he once said to me, like it was the biggest character flaw in the world. The truth was, I preferred reading books to running about in the street. I didn't see it as a weakness either. But we had to eat the horrid supper, of course. No one chucked food away with a war on, not even stuff that resembled brains. You simply pinched your nose and swallowed hard, then glugged down a glass of water. Afterwards, Suki, being the eldest and in charge, said we deserved a trip out. She'd already seen the film last week with her friend. It's the cat's pyjamas! You'll both love it! she gushed. As we went around the house, closing the blackout curtains, then to me, teasingly, Cheer up! It's going to be fun! People were always telling me I had a serious face, because I was dark and thoughtful looking like my dad. What they really meant was I wasn't as pretty as Suki, and I didn't mind because I was proud of my big sister. Not jealous. She was just as marvellous on the inside. Everyone seemed to think so. Is that better? I beamed up at Suki, so she could tell how thrilled I was to be going out, especially with her. We didn't see nearly enough of her anymore. She'd recently got a pen pal, and acted mysterious when letters postmarked Devon arrived addressed to her. Hmm, straight away there's a link, isn't there, to Devon, because Suki has been receiving post from someone mysterious in Devon, and we know that Devon is where Olive and Suki are eventually evacuated to at a later point in the story. So the author's already dropping us some clues. We'd all guessed who she was writing to. Our next door neighbour, Gloria, had a younger sister called Queenie who was 19 and lived in Devon. Having a pen pal was, according to Suki, all the rage. And like she was with anything new, Suki threw herself into it, kicking off her office shoes each night after work, then disappearing to her room to write. It wasn't the same as when we'd sent letters to Dad, where we each got to add our own line on the official blue army paper. Why do you think they're writing letters to their dad? on official blue army paper. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Dad must be serving in the army and they're writing to their dad to keep in touch with him. These were her letters, hers and Queenie's. I often wondered what they had to say to each other that was so private and took up so much time. Once we'd got our coats and grabbed our gas masks from where they hung in the hallway, we were ready for the cinema. It was a cold, damp evening, and we were all done up in woolly hats and scarves. Cliff Smittens, on string threaded through his coat, dangled limp at the end of his sleeves, and he flapped them like wings to make me laugh. Such was my excitement, I didn't think to ask why Suki was buttoning up Mum's best green checked coat, rather than her own. She'd done her hair different too, curled like a film star's, and was wearing postbox red lipstick. 
It made her look much older than 17 and rather like mum. The mum before dad died, who'd styled her hair and worn makeup and could argue for England. We're going to leave it there and we're going to continue with this chapter next time. Thank you.